Okay, so in this next section, we're going to be talking about solving equations that contain rational expressions. Remember, rational means we are dealing with a fraction, and we're dealing with an equation, which means there's an equal to sign, so we're going to have to do some solving. This is our only objective. So, the authors of the book have a little bit of a different way of solving these particular equations. And as you do your homework, and when you look at their examples, if you like the way they're doing it, then please, by all means, use it. I choose to do it a little bit differently, but we end up at the same results, and some of the steps are seeming a little bit the same. It's just the order in which we're doing them. So here's my recommendation. First, we make all the denominators look the same. After we do that, then we actually get rid of the fractions. We want to clear the fractions by multiplying both sides, multiplying everything by that common denominator. Because it's quicker to solve an equation without fractions than with fractions. And then we're going to be left with an equation that's very easy for us to solve. So let's take a look at this particular problem. First off, we want to find the LCD. And the LCD for this problem will be 20. And then as our first step told us, we want to make all the denominators look the same. So that means I'm going to have to make everything look like a 20, which means the 4 has to get multiplied by a 5. And if you do it to the denominator, you do it to the numerator. The 5 has to get multiplied by a 4. And if you do it to the denominator, you do it to the numerator. And gratefully, the 20 is already a 20. So we don't have to be concerned about that. Now, Let's see what this looks like. This will be 5x over 20 plus 16 over 20 equals 1 over 20. So all the denominators look the same, yes? Good. So our second step says that after we make all the denominators look the same, we want to clear those fractions. And we're going to multiply to do it. Now, you might be asking, well, why are we multiplying to do this? Well, take a look. This line, remember, between numerator and denominator means division. So if you want to break division, if you want to clear division, yeah, you're going to have to multiply. And I'm going to multiply by 20, the common denominator, so I can cancel those guys. Well, if you do it to one of those fractions, you're going to have to do it to, you said it, every single one of them. And when I do that, all my denominators clear out, which means I am left with a nice, simple little equation of 5x plus 16 equals 1. Now, this equation, you guys know how to solve. Got to move that 16 over first, and then you got to get rid of that 5 less, which means we end up with a negative 3. And by the way, if you're very visual, please make certain that you do this little minus 16 under both sides and literally do divide both sides by 5. Okay, that's extremely important. So we end up with the answer of x equaling negative 3. Cool? Pretty simple, yes? Okay. And to check it, you replace your x with negative 3 back into the original equation to make sure it works. Okay, so here's another example. I want to solve this, and I'm noticing that that 1 is not a fraction. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it a fraction, first and foremost. Yeah, you're going to have to put a 1 under it. So I do have three denominators to work with. And I need to, first and for foremost, find the LCD. So one of my denominators is a 3x. The second one is a 1. The third one is a 6. And remember, the first step of finding the LCD is to factor. Well, that's 3 times x. Not much you can do with it. That's just a 1, and that 6 is a 2 times 3. And remember, you want to make these guys all look the same, right? So, I'm noticing this first denominator and this last denominator both have a 3. Well, that second denominator also needs a 3, doesn't it? Check. I'm noticing this first denominator has a solo x. Well, I guess denominators 2 and 3 also need that solo x. Check and check. And then I'm noticing this last denominator has a 2. Well, I guess these 
first two denominators also need a 2. Check and check. Now, the one thing we didn't do was this 1. Well, if I multiply everything by a 1, does it really change anything? You're right, it doesn't, which means in actuality, our LCD is made up of a 2, a 3, and an X, or you could simply say 6X. Yes? Lovely. All right, so here we go. We need to make all three of our denominators look the same. Well, my original first denominator was a 3X. Do you notice what you ended up multiplying it by? Yeah, 2, which means I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by a 2. Denominator number 2 only had a 1, didn't it? Which means you had to multiply by a 2, a 3, and an X. That means you have to multiply it by the entire 6X. And our third denominator already had the 2 and 3, which means we basically just needed this X right here. So let's see what it looks like. Looks like I have 10 over 6x plus 6x over 6x equals 7x over 6x. Agreed? Okay. Now, all the denominators are the same. That was the first step. Agreed? Second step, get rid of all those denominators. I want these 6x's on the bottom to go. And remember, this line means what again? That's right, it means division, which means you're going to have to multiply to break them off. And when you do that, the 6x on the denominator cancels with that 6x you just multiplied by. Which means I am left with this nice simple little equation of 10 plus 6x equals 7x. And when I solve, I end up with x equaling 10. And again, if you're the kind of person that you're like, I need to write these little steps in, then please make sure you write them in for yourselves. You know you better than I do. Cool? Okay, so let's take a gander. We need to check, and here's the reason why we really need to check. Do you notice that this denominator has an X in it? Which means it won't always be a 3, will it? No, it won't. And the one thing we have to make sure of is this denominator never equals what number? That's right, zero. I have to make sure my denominator never equal to zero. That's huge. Our denominators are never allowed to be equal to zero. So when I take my 10 and I plug it in, that's where I plug it into. When I multiply these, is this equal to zero? Nope. So this 10 is basically good to go. And they will finish it. They will finish it to check to make sure that the left and the right side are exactly the same. And they are. 5 over 30 reduces to 1 over 6, so we're good there. Okay, workspace for example 4. So let's look at example 4. Oh, I've got three denominators. And first things first, I need to make them all look the same, don't I? Okay, so let's go back to our workspace and find an LCD. I had a 2x. I have an x plus 1. And I have 3x squared plus 3x. And I need the LCD. And the first step is to, that's right, factor. Well, that's 2 times x. And since that's 2 times x, there's not much you can do with that. The second one is x plus 1. Remember the plus sign is super glue. So that's x plus 1. That's glued together. You can't look at them separately. That's one unit. And then I'm noticing this third denominator has a square. And because it has a square, it's telling me I'm going to have to factor. Okay. So remember the first step of factoring is to take out what's in common. And I'm noticing that I can divide both of these by not only a 3 but also an x. So when I do that, I am going to be left with that 3x on the outside and an x plus 1 on the inside. Cool? Okay. So far, so good. Now remember, we have to make them look the same. I'm noticing the first denominator has a 2, which means denominator number 2 needs a 2, and so does that third denominator. 
So check and check. I'm noticing the first denominator has a solo x, which means denominator number two needs a solo x, and gratefully denominator three already has the solo x. Don't have to worry about that one. So check there. I'm noticing denominator number two has the parentheses of x plus one. So I guess that first denominator needs that parentheses. Oh, and the last one already has it. Check. And last but not least, ah, uh, there's this other little three hanging out. So the third denominator has a three. Well, I guess the first denominator is going to need to have that three, and so will the second one. So it looks like your LCD is made up of a 2, a 3, an X, a solo X, and the parenthesis of X plus 1, which means if I simplify the outside, I get 6X times X plus 1, and that's where I would leave it. I would not multiply that out. I would not distribute that. Okay, so, you know, the advantage to doing this workspace over here of seeing what you literally needed to multiply by will show you what you need to multiply each of your denominators by. This 2x, if you look back at your work, you had to multiply it by 3 and that parenthesis, didn't you? So that means that first denominator gets multiplied by the 3 and the parenthesis. And if you do it to the bottom, sorry, you do it to the top. And I'm noticing the second denominator in my workspace was multiplied by a 3, a 2, and a solo x. Which means we're going to have to multiply this by that 3, and that 2, and that solo x. And our last denominator, hmm, all we have to do is multiply it by that 2. So that's all i got to do with this guy is multiply it by a 2, top and bottom. Which means we have, if you allow me to distribute, right? That's going to give you 3x plus 3 over our LCD of 6x times the parenthesis of x plus 1 minus 6x, you allow me to multiply these three together, over our common denominator of 6x times x plus 1 equals 2 over common denominator 6x times x plus 1. Yes, I wrote the third denominator in factored form because I want all of these to look exactly the same. Now remember, that was the first step. Make them look exactly the same. The second step is to clear these denominators out. Do not let your brain get into a different mode. The second step is to clear the denominators out. Get rid of them. So every single one of these fractions is going to get multiplied by this common denominator. So you can cancel, get rid of them, because it is quicker to solve an equation without fractions than with fractions. Stay in mode and stay focused on what you're trying to do. First step, get the denominators the same. Second step, clear them out, which we just did. Which means we are left with 3x plus 3 minus that 6x equaling 2. And when I collect the like terms on the left side, and I get the x by itself, which means I move that 3 over, and I get rid of this negative 3, looks like our, whoops, Looks like our answer is actually a positive one-third. Okay, remember, we cannot let any of these denominators equal zero. The denominator is never allowed to be equal to zero. So we need to check and make sure that when I plug in that one-third into the first denominator, I don't get a zero. Do I? You're right, I don't. As a matter of fact, I just get one over two-thirds, don't I? Oh, that's one of them complex fractions, isn't it? Okay, so remember, it's 1 divided by 2 thirds, right? And that means 1 times 3 over 2, right? Which means we simply get 3 halves for fraction number 1. There's the 3 halves. Okay, let's look at this second. 
good denominator. That's one plus a third. Well, that's what? One and a third? Which means that's one. Let's try that again. Which means that's one over four thirds. Which means that's one divided by four thirds. And what? That's one times three over four because you flip by in the reciprocal, right? Which means just three fourths. Which means fraction number two is simply three fourths. And then this third one, I'll let you take care of that. I know. You're like, gee, thanks. You all can handle it. And when you subtract the three halves and the three fourths, you get three fourths. And when you simplify this side, you get three fourths. Good. Truly, the main point is you're not allowed to let any of your denominators be equal to a zero when you plug in your answer. They cannot be equal to zero. And I know some of you are going, well, what happens if it is equal to zero? There's our solution. No worries. We'll get it figured out if it is. Okay. So, first things first, LCD, right? Common denominator, right? Okay. Do you notice all three denominators are not in descending order? As a matter of fact, they all have the number first and the variable second. I think I'm just going to leave them this way. And I know some of you are going, you can do that. If they're all in the flipped order, the reverse order, I can do that. So I'm just going to leave them this way. Which means, really, the only one I need to factor is this first denominator. And this first denominator, after you do the work, I'm going to let you go do that work, ends up to be this. So I'm not going to worry about it looking non-factored anymore. I want to keep it looking factored. So it looks like our common denominator, our lowest common denominator, will be 3 minus a in parentheses times 3 plus a in parentheses. How are we doing? That made sense? Okay, and if you're like, where did you get this 3 minus a, 3 plus a? You've got to factor this, 9 minus a squared. So again, I'm going to let you go do that work. We've done that quite a bit so far. You can handle it. Okay, now that I know my common denominator, I need to get all these denominators to look the same. Well, fraction number one is okay. Fraction number two looks like this is missing a 3 plus a, which means so is the top. And fraction number three looks like it's missing a 3 minus a, which means so is the top. So now, let's see what this looks like. Looks like I have 6a over 3 minus a in parentheses times 3 plus a in parentheses. Plus, allow me to distribute, I end up with 9 plus 3a all over 3 minus a and 3 plus a equals, and again, allow me to distribute, looks like 3a minus a squared all over 3 minus a times 3 plus a. Yes? Cool. All the denominators look the same, don't they? Okay, which means now I get to get rid of them. Now that they all look the same, now that it's easy peasy to get rid of them all. So every single fraction is going to get multiplied by this 3 plus a times 3 minus a. Every single one of them will get multiplied by our common denominator. And when you do that, all these denominators cancel, which gives us a simpler looking equation to solve. I have 6a plus 9 plus 3a equals 3a minus a to the power of 2. Are you okay with that? Okay, now, one thing I need you to notice. This line looks a lot simpler than the original. But do you notice this square? Remember, in order to solve something with a second degree, you are going to have to do what? Yeah, 
you're going to have to solve by factoring. But to do that correctly, you first set the equation equal to what number? Yeah, zero. Which means, start collecting things. Looks like I have 9a plus 9 on the left side. And you know, I don't want my a squared to be negative. I want it to be positive. So I'm going to move everything from the right to the left. Which means now it's a positive a squared. A minus 3a, still with the plus 9a, and the plus 9 equaling 0. I simplify this by collecting like terms. And this is what I am going to get. Y'all with me? Not quite done. We still have to factor because we set up here that square means solve by factoring. Okay. I'm going to let you do your work, your side work, and after you do it, hopefully yours factors like mine factors. When I factor this, I get a plus 3 times itself. What do you do with each of these parentheses? That's right, you said each parenthesis equal to zero. And in this case, when you do that, yes, you're going to get the exact same answer twice. So, I have my answer of a equals a negative three, don't I? Are we done? Nope, got to check it. So, take a look. I'm basically plugging it into the denominator. Yes, I should also plug it into the numerator. Oops, looks like this was written wrong. This was a 6a. Yes, I should plug it into the numerator. Right? This a should be a negative 3. But I'm not going to do that right now because I need you to see what happens. I don't really care what's happening in these numerators. Okay? What I'm noticing is that I've got one denominator, in this case two denominators, that are equal to zero. If I have at least one denominator equal to zero, then can negative three, can a equaling negative three be a solution if a denominator equals zero? What do you think? Hopefully you said no. And here it is. Check it out. Let me get rid of my writing. Notice that negative 3 makes a denominator 0 in the original equation. Therefore, negative 3 is not a solution. And since that was my only answer, there is no solution to this equation at all. Because the only answer I could have used got knocked out. It's like, nope, can't use it can't use it because it made a denominator zero. So this problem, sorry about that. So this problem, let me get a better color, has no solution. Okay. We all right with that? Good. So now, helpful hint. As we can see from that previous example, it is important to check the proposed solutions in the original equation. Notice how they say it, proposed solutions. They're not actual solutions until you verify, does it make the denominator equal zero? If the answer is no, we're good. If the answer is yes, not so good. Okay, let's take a look at this one. All right, so... I have two terms on each side, but the x doesn't have a denominator, neither does that two. So I'm going to make them have or be fractions by putting a 1 under them, right? Okay. So now I need to make all the denominators look the same, yes? Okay, well this one actually is pretty simple. Looks like the common denominator is just x plus 3, which means I need to multiply the first fraction by x plus 3, top and bottom. 
Fraction 2 has an x plus 3 already, so it is fraction 3. And it looks like this last fraction does not have the denominator of x plus 3, so I get to multiply it, top and bottom, yes. We good so far? Does that make sense? Okay, so if you allow me to distribute this x, looks like we get x squared plus 3x over x plus 3 minus 6 over x plus 3 equals the 2x over x plus 3. And again, allow me to distribute, please. Plus 2x plus 6 over x plus 3. Yes? Okay. Wow, it's kind of nice that there's only one... Uh, polynomial to deal with in that denominator. It's nice that all I have to multiply every fraction by is this x plus 3. This makes it kind of nice to deal with. Now, like, why are some in parentheses and some are not? Uh, you can make them all in parentheses or not, but the point is all the x plus 3s and the top and the bottom get canceled. Which means what remains should be a simpler equation. x squared plus 3x minus 6 equals 2x plus 2x plus 6. Cool? Great. Okay, wait a minute. I'm seeing something we saw in the last problem. See that square? How do I solve it? That tells you solve by... That's right, factoring. But first, what do you have to do? Right, the equation must be equal to zero. You mean you got all that from that little square? Sure did. That little square gives us a lot of information. Okay, so x squared plus 3x minus 6. Collect the like terms over here on the right. I'm going to bring everything from the right to the left because x squared is already positive and I want to leave it that way. So x squared looks like it's minus x and looks like it's minus 12 equaling 0. Cool? All right. So um, I'm going to continue this on the next page. Why? Because I've got more room. So we have x squared minus x minus 12 equaling 0. Now, you have to factor that, yes? Okay, so I'm going to let you factor it, and hopefully we agree. I got x minus 4, and x plus 3 equals 0. And I suggest pausing this video if you did not factor it. Pause it. Factor that, see if we get the same thing, and then start the video again. Okay. So each parenthesis gets set equal to zero, which means I'm going to have two answers. In this case, I get two different answers, right? Okay. Good. Loving it. Now here's the thing. Your denominator is never allowed to be what? Yeah, that's right. Never allowed to be zero. So I got some checking to do over here. I'm going to check the four. And let's go back. My denominator is just x plus three. I need to make sure that when I take my denominator and plug in that four, that that doesn't equal zero. Does it equal zero? Nope. So this four is good to go. Check. Okay, got to go check the second one now. So we had x equaling negative three. My denominator was x plus three. I plug in that negative three, and I get my denominator equaling zero. Whoa. Not so good. That's not good at all. No. Sorry. I'm going to change color. 
one more time. This is not good. Not good. Which means you cannot have uh, x cannot be equal to negative 3 because it makes a denominator 0. So negative 3 can't be the solution. Which means our only solution, our only solution that works is 4. Good? You guys with me? Okay. One more example. Here's the workspace for it. There are the denominators. So let's go find the LCD. We had x squared plus 7x plus 10. We had 3x plus 6 and x plus 5. Okay, so remember, first things first, you have to factor. And again, pause the video, you factor that first denominator, and then come back and see if we agree. Okay, but what I got when I factored it was x plus 2 in parentheses, times x plus 5. In the second denominator, I notice they both are divisible by 3, so that's exactly what I'm going to do is factor out of 3. And that last denominator, eh, you're just x plus 5. Not much to do with it. Okay, so remember, they must all look the same. So, first fraction, or first denominator is an x plus 2. Good. Second one has x plus 2. Good. Well, third one doesn't. I need x plus 2 on the third one. Check. First denominator has an x plus 5. Okay. Second one doesn't. Need it. Check. Third one has it. Check. Okay. Everything is checked but this 3. So this 3 is in denominator number 2, which means I need it in number 1 and number 3. Which means in this case... Your LCD is going to be made up of 3, and in parentheses, x plus 2, times x plus 5. Got it. Okay. And again, I like it better when we write these in factor form. So this was x plus 2, and x plus 5, times x plus 5. This was 3 times x plus 2. And this was just x plus 5 already, so that was okay. Okay, so here's the thing. What do we need to multiply by? What do we need to multiply by? Go back to your workspace. On the first denominator, you had to multiply by a 3, which means the first fraction, top and bottom, has to get multiplied by 3. Second fraction, go back to your workspace. You had to multiply by x plus 5. So fraction number 2, top and bottom, has to get multiplied by x plus 5. And fraction number 3 had to get multiplied by a 3 and an x plus 2. So this is going to get multiplied by a 3 as well as an x plus 2, top and bottom. That's why this workspace is so important, because you can literally see what you needed to multiply by to make them look the same. So when you go to actually solve the equation, you know exactly what you have to multiply by. Does this make sense? Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got. So allow me to distribute in the numerator. Looks like that first numerator is 3x plus 6 over this LCD. equals. Second numerator is just simply an x plus 5. Anything multiplied by 1 is itself, so yay for the x for the 1. And we're subtracting. Allow me to distribute the 3. So that's third nu numerator is 3x plus 6 over the same denominator, right? And it doesn't matter the order in which you write the denominators, they're all the same. Okay, how are we doing? So far so good? Okay. So you know what we got to do next, right? Okay, so I'm going to let you do that work, and hopefully you come up with the same thing I do.
Does yours look like mine? Good. Now, there's one item we have to be very cautious on, super cautious. See that minus sign? How many terms are following it? Yeah, not just one term, but two terms, which means both of them should get the minus sign, shouldn't they? Which means this should be in parentheses always. When you have more than one term, more than one term following the subtraction sign, put them in parentheses because you knew, you know as well as I do, let me just rewrite this first part. You, your brain already knew that that 3x was going to be a negative 3x. You knew it. You saw it. You saw it appear in this problem right here. You knew that that 3x was going to be negative. Whoops. Might be helpful if I wrote this correctly. And that plus 6, because it's also following the subtraction sign because it was in the same fraction, also needs to have the minus sign. So it's not a positive 6. It's a negative 6. Are you with me? Okay, so let's collect the like terms. And negative 2x minus 1, right? I'm going to bring the x's to the left side. So why? Because I want to keep them positive. I'm going to bring that 6 over. And then the last thing I do is divide by that 5. How are we doing? So far, so good. Does that make sense? Okay, so x is equaling to this lovely fraction of negative 7 over 5, isn't it? Okay, so what do we have to do? Yeah, we have to check. We've got to check. We've got to make sure that x equaling negative 7 over 6 does not allow any denominator to be equal to 0. If that it is the case for no denominator equal to zero, then we got a solution. Okay, so go back. My first denominator was this x squared plus 7x plus 10, right? Your second denominator is 3x plus 6, yes? And your last denominator was x plus 5, all from the original problem, right? These were the original denominators. I'm going to be honest with you. I like looking them, at them in their factor forms. I really think it is so much simpler. You'll see why I say that in a moment. Remember, I'm trying to see if this negative 7 fifths is going to make any of these denominators equal to 0. So if I take negative 7 over 5 and add it to 2, does this equal zero? Nope. So that's good to go. If I plug in negative 7 over 5 and add it to 5, does this equal zero? Nope. So I'm good to go. So, so far, so good. Now I'm going to go over here in the second fraction. Well, that's just a 3. There's no x next to it, so I don't really care. But again, this x plus 2, if I plug in the negative 7 over 5 and add it to 2, is this equal to 0? Nope. I should have put a nope on that one. So we're good to go in there. That's a nope. That's a nope. And x plus 5, hmm, we did that checking already, didn't we? We checked that x plus 2 already, didn't we? Does it equal 0? Nope. So it's good to go. So x equaling negative 7 fifths is a solution for us. Yay! Okay? Okay. So, 